Hi everybody, it's Gene Simmons, and you're not, and you're listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast with Steve, BC, BB, and Dylan. But you knew that, didn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello, Potter Than Hellions. Welcome back to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host, and I am in the room tonight with only Dylan. And he will be your keyboard player for this evening. And we have a special pinch hitter this evening. We kind of had a little scheduling problem this evening. So uh, I called up my good buddy from down south, Stephen Michael. How are you, my friend? Now batting for the world champion Atlanta Braves. Oh, Steven, God. Stephen, Michael, 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 what's up? Not much. Uh, thank you once again for uh, for hanging with us tonight. I, uh, I, I literally gave Stephen probably, what, an hour notice. Cause uh, yeah, and uh, I want to today is November tenth, twenty twenty one. I want to say happy anniversary to BB and his lovely wife Randy. So that's why he's not here this evening, and BC had something uh, something come up uh, rather suddenly, so he he wasn't able to make it. So I gave Stephen a call, and yeah. here we are. Something suddenly came up. Something suddenly came up. I'm gonna say a little Brady Bunch <laughs> shit going on there. So Stephen, how are you, my friend? Um, I, I guess I'll say congratulations to you down there in the Atlanta Braves, even though, like, I can't stand them. But um, they deserved it. Did, you didn't get to any games, did you? Uh, not this year I didn't get any games. No. Nah. Uh, just, uh, I, you know, I watch it from TV. It's easier to watch from TV. Yeah, the lines aren't as long at the bathroom when the beer's cheaper. Exactly, and the pitcher's actually better. Not the pitcher, but the pitcher <laughs> yeah. on the TV. That's true. You don't have to drive home either and fight the crowds for sure. And that's a that's a brand new stadium down there, right? Uh, it's a couple of years old now. Okay, three years old now. Okay. Yeah, yeah I know. I know it's one of the newest ones in the in the major leagues. So I, I I'm hoping to get down there one of these days. Maybe I'll stop drop into your house someday, unexpected. <laughs> You're always in. welcome, my friend. Uh, <laughs> just uh, don't drop in unexpectedly. Call me. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I I'll put a. I'll put a key under the doormat for you, <laughs> okay. and uh, yeah, you can come on by. Now, it's a nice ballpark. We've been out to the ballpark. I, I work part-time at a venue right outside the uh, the wall there. Oh, okay, cool. It's, it's kind of part of this, uh, it's part of this whole uh, eat, drink, live uh, complex. So, oh, okay. like, the stadium wall is literally probably 20 yards away from where I work. Awesome. I like I said once again. I appreciate you hanging in with us. And uh, what's up with you, Dylan? Oh, not too much. Uh, just uh, good news on the work front. So riding that high, and uh, you know, doing well. Okay, you have to explain that to me again later. I really wasn't sorry. I wasn't really paying attention. To yeah, you. I understand. Uh, I, I figured know. as much. No, but well, you were really talking to your mother. So, but me not paying attention. That's that's nothing new. All right. Uh, what are we listening to, Stephen? What are you listening to these days, my friend? I haven't I haven't talked to you about music in a little while. What do you got going? Yeah. It feels like uh, you, you've been gone forever, and it feels like we haven't conversed in forever. But yeah, it does. Uh, I'm listening to Eclipse Wired and Crazy Licks Street Lethal, and in the archives uh, thing, I'm more listening to Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, uh, the album Deja Vu, which, by the way, is fantastic. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dylan, what do you got? So I finally listened to the new uh, Bullet for My Valentine album. I believe it is, is it self-titled? It's self-titled, yeah. It is self-titled. Uh-huh. There, are, there are a lot of songs on there that I like. Uh, there are some that I feel like they, they kind of over like overcorrected, and it was just kind of heavy for heavy sake, whereas right. I miss the melodic part on a lot of the songs. It just very much feels like a metalcore album with not a lot of personality. But songs like No Happy Ever After had that that bullet groove that I really like, where, where they kind of do a fun riff and uh, a little more clean vocals. Because this album is mostly the gruffer, kind of, not screaming, but the gruffer right. vocals, which kind of surprised me because I figured that they weren't going to do that. But it's a heavy album for sure, if, if you're into that. So that's, that's kind of what I've been listening to. And... Uh, it's not bad. It's not going to make my end of the year list, but it's a good okay. album. Yeah, I, 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 I know I had mentioned it to you, and I didn't, uh, 
I know you probably didn't have a chance to really get a, a chance to listen to it all, you know, when we talked about it before. But, yeah. Um, uh, for me, for what I'm listening to, I gave the new Iron Maiden album, Senjitsu, another good listen today. I'm still digging that. Absolutely love it. I finally got to listen to that plush album all the way through. Um, Steven, have you checked them, those those young ladies out? Yeah, so let me talk about that for just a split second here. Sure. I won't take too much of your time. I kind of figured you would you would have checked them out. I'm, I'm curious because there's a lot of buzz. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, my god it's the album of the year it's the best thing i've heard and this has been ongoing even before the album was released when they just released a couple singles i to be honest i didn't listen to any of the singles i waited till the record came out i listened to the record um maybe i need more time i'm gonna be honest i don't get it now let me prerequisite that i think the the women have an amazing amount of talent like Mar- uh, Mariah I think is that her name Mar- yes Mariah yeah she she's an amazing singer I remember her from the voice and she did rock tunes on the voice and I really liked her I think they're very talented I just don't hear the songwriting is all that's all I'm saying but people are like this is the most amazing album what is your thoughts on it well I really liked the the first single they put out, Athena. We played it as our gym song a couple couple episodes ago. I really enjoyed that. I was looking forward to it, and I I didn't get a chance. I was attempting to listen to it on the way home from the Kiss Cruise, and our flight was supposed to be like an hour and fifteen minutes, and our pilot put this fucking jet in warp speed, and the flight was like forty minutes. <laughs> so I didn't get to listen to the whole album then. So I finally got to listen to probably nine ten. I think I I didn't get to the last song today. Uh, I like it. I I really like it. It's it's not by any stretch of the imagination for me an, an album of the year. It won't even be in my top twenty. But I I respect their talent. I think they're I think they're really good, and they kind of reminded me a little bit of a heavier Thunder Mother. Yeah, here's my problem with that. So I, it doesn't remind me of that at all. And and here's part of the issue. I think probably technically the ladies in plush are better players and singers, maybe singers. I don't know. But for me, pound for pound, Thunder Mother writes better hooks, better melodies, and they have a better groove to their music. That's just me personally. I'm a big Thunder Mother fan. I've always been a big Thunder Mother fan. Uh, And so I don't want to be like, (laughs) I don't want to be the only guy going, hey, I just don't connect with the plush because a lot of people seem to like it, but I just, and maybe I need to spend more time with it. I mean, I'm, I'm being honest and saying I've only given it a couple of spins, but usually if something doesn't even slightly connect with me in that first, second uh, spin, first or second spin, then chances are probably not going to connect with me. And I just, I didn't get it. Right. I, I, I really, I did enjoy it. What I listened to, like I said, I didn't get to listen to it even twice all the way through, but I, I got through, like, like I said, most of it, I, I enjoyed it. It doesn't have the, it's not as, I don't know to describe it as like dirty as like Thunder Mother's music is, if that makes sense. Like it, you don't have that, that ACDC mm-hmm. kind of feel to it. You have more mm-hmm. of a little polished feel to it, I think. But um, I, I do like it, and I, I'll definitely be spending some more time with it. I just wanted to get your quick thoughts on it. Like I said, I'm not, like, I besides the theme of the first song, I, I probably couldn't even tell you another title of the song, but I really, so far, I, I like what I've heard of it, and I, I think it'll, it'll grow me a little more. I just wanted to get your take on it. Do you listen to that at all, Dylan? I have not. No? Okay. Uh, and the other thing I was listening to, uh, our buddy Mark Anthony K sent me his new single from the upcoming in the year thirty seventy three book three, which will be released on January twenty second, twenty twenty two. And this first single will be released by the time you guys are hearing this. So get over to Bandcamp, check it out. I think it'll probably be on YouTube as well. It's called The Holy Shield. Um, and thank you, Mark, for sending me an advanced copy of it. I, I was I was glad to hear it. I really enjoyed it. Um, definitely what I've come to expect from Project Gemini. Uh, some cool you know vocal harmonies in there. Some cool keyboard stuff going on. 
Uh, real cool, great dual guitar solo thing going on there. Then like a, you know, just like a single guitar solo. Really good. Um, it had a little more of a poppy feel to it. Not a like like blatant, but it kind of had a little little more poppy undertone for me. And I thought it was cool. I thought it was kind of a, like a good little good little switch there. So so check that out. By the time you guys hear this episode, it will be out. Project Gemini. It's called the Holy Shield. And that will be available when you guys hear this episode. So jump over to Bandcamp and check it out. And the album, like I said, is going to be out January 22nd, 2022. So what we are listening to this week, myself, Sinjitsu, Plush, self-titled album, and the new Project Gemini sing single, The Holy Shield. Steven's got Eclipse Wired, Crazy Lick Street Lethal, and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. I didn't quite catch the name of the album. It's Deja Vu. It's one of their early early albums. It's okay. got a bunch of hits on it, but right. it's good in the morning. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that could help my morning. Dylan And Dylan uh, has Bolt for My Valentine, the new self-titled album. So um, as you guys can probably see from the title, we're going to talk a little Ted Nugent tonight. Ted, Mu Ted Nugent music only we are going to speak about this evening. And um, I've been waiting to do a Ted episode for a while. I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I know... BB and BC have stuff going. I was really looking forward to um, having these guys. I got I got BC's list. BB didn't give me one, but uh, I, I've seen Ted Nugent with uh, BC probably five or six times. First time I saw Ted was he opened up for Aerosmith on the Little Miss Dangerous tour, and Aerosmith was during the Done with Mirrors tour in Binghamton, Pennsylvania. Um, it, it really it's a standout concert for me. It was the first time I've seen Ted. First time I've seen Aerosmith. I literally left the baseball field. I pitched a one-hitter against a rival school that day, literally jumped in the car with my girlfriend, got changed on the way to the show, and then saw my first head in my first Aerosmith show. So it was like three awesome things tonight, or that night, and actually four, but that was later on. Um, ah. Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> I, I've always and, and I, I've, I've told the story before how I how I first heard Ted. My neighbors blasting their music when I was younger down the street, and um, you know I wasn't you know buying albums or anything besides Kiss at that time. But I specifically remember Ted Nugent, and that's really stuck in my brain. First album I've ever got from Ted was Weekend Warriors. The color on that album, the cover, the remember the Steve, remember the pinball machine was that cover? Uh, oh, Ted Nugent. Record? Yeah, yeah. No. No. Oh, what, you've never what? seen the pinball machine? No, Stephen. He's saying that the the pinball machine was of that cover. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> now I was. I thought he was saying the album cover was the pinball machine. I'm like, what? No, 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 I don't no. no. That. <laughs> the album cover was the main picture on the pinball machine. No, I don't remember that pinball machine. Oh, really? Oh, I, I think they didn't. They have it at. They uh, had it at three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw okay. that. that I'll have cool. to look. I'll have to look up and I'll show you a picture of it. So very cool. And I, I, you know, that was the first Ted album I have. Still, uh, very. That's my like soft spot for Ted Nugent albums. That that weekend words because it was the first I picked up. So uh, I'll get into the songs. Um, Stephen, you picked ten, right? I picked ten. You picked ten. Okay. We were we were going to do twelve, but um, I with Stephen such short notice, we will we'll do ten. So uh, I got to figure out what the fucking boot out here though. Okay, uh, I started out with Stormtrooping from the first Ted Nugent album. Great riff, excellent groove to it, uh, fantastic live track. And this is one that he hadn't done live for a while, and then he just suddenly brought it back out again. And I like that about it because you didn't hear it like every single time you've seen Ted, and it was kind of like a little special treat when he would play it. Just a really great live song. It's also on Double Live Gonzo. Um, next song, Doggy Dog from Free For All. Just a great chugging start. I like the oh, oh in the beginning there when it when it kicks in. Uh, I like the lyrics. Uh, Kamikaze from the 100th floor, Swan Dives to the Street. He couldn't handle this madness no more because he wanted that sweet meat. Fucking awesome. Just classic Ted lyrics. The solo in it absolutely kills. And, you know, I, I seriously think that Ted is extremely, extremely underrated as a guitar player, and a lot of that is probably because of he's Ted Nugent, of all his other bullshit that he has going on. Um, I, I'd rather him do his talking with his fingers instead than his mouth, you know what I mean? Just, like, play your music, please. Next song is 
uh, we, we've talked about this song probably. BC's, I think he's picked it on every fucking 70s episode we've done. <laughs> but I got to throw in Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Tang. But this is from the full Bluntal Nugity album. And Dylan's going to play the intro right here. You know, I know what you like. I know what you're looking for. But you got to have some of that Motor City Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Tang. You like it, don't you? You crave that shit with Uncle Ted now, don't you? <laughs> A little dinner music for my friends. Wait. Sweet booty Cause I'm a talker for my baby You know I never mean maybe And that is the best version of this song. It's just kick ass. I love how it starts. It starts out different. If you guys have not heard that version, I hope that this little clip that Dylan played for you will make you want to check it out because this version is so... It's so aggressive. I don't know any other way to explain that. Like the, you know, the, the Double Live Gonzo version is, you know, you've heard that a thousand times. You've heard the studio version a thousand times. But if you haven't heard this version from uh, Full Bluntal Nugity, that's what the album's called. It was recorded in 2001. Definitely check that out. It's fucking fantastic. Next one, I got the uh, opening track from the Weekend Warriors album, Need You Bad. Uh, feet, this one features a guy named Charlie Hun on vocals. He replaced Derek St. Holmes in the band after Derek was in for the first couple albums. And the guitar tone on this album and this song is just absolutely amazing. Rocking start to a great album. And like I said, it was the first Ted album that I ever that I ever bought. And the, the production on this is really good. There's a really cool dual solo in it that's fucking fantastic. The next one, I, I shoot to 2018. A lot of people have no idea that Ted even had like another fucking song or album out after Wangle Tangle came out off the Scream Dream album in 1980. But he has an album out and came out in 2018, three short years ago. And uh, it's called The Music Made Me Do It. Just a really... There's some clunk, believe me, there's some fucking clunkers on this album. I'm like, what are you doing? But this is the, the opening track and the title track in the album. It's got... But you could tell that he's back playing that hollow body guitar it has that you know that classic ted nugent tone on it because like after um i'd say probably in the in the early 80s he started playing those uh paul reed smith guitars and playing les pauls and stuff but you could tell he definitely got back to that hollow body guitar on that i'm gonna go to 1986's little miss dangerous the title track uh the song was uh the name of an episode on miami vice and they featured the song on that episode and I remember seeing this one live that first time I saw Ted, his uh, girlfriend or wife or at the time, whatever, had dressed in all these garters and bras and shit and bring his guitars out. And he was calling her Little Miss Dangerous. But it's got this like slinky bass part, like a real sexy, sleazy feel to it. Um, the only thing is, like, I'm not crazy about the electronic sounding drums on this whole album. I love the, the Little Miss Dangerous album, but the, the drums kind of, it's like, kind of like the shit on... Um, Priest ram it down. It, it's tough to get past that that electronic drum sound. Um, I have Skin Tight next from the If You Can't Lick Him, Lick Him album in 1988. Almost a totally forgotten Ted Nugent album. And, you know, and some of it's for a good reason. There's a lot of clunkers on this album, but this is a cool one. One of the, uh, the kind of hidden gems on there. There's parts of the Wango Tango riff in this in this song sprinkled throughout, which kind of gives a little fun factor. Uh, it's not a long song, cool short one. Uh, next one, I got to go with Fred Bear from The Spirit of the Wild. Just a fantastic song about the famous hunter. Uh, this song, I actually got to see them, Ted, perform it live before it was on an album. I think he did it like, he was doing it for like two years before he put out The Spirit of the Wild album in 1995. Because I remember BC and I saw him up in Binghamton with Night Ranger and Quiet Riot and Slaughter. Like a four band package was great and Ted came out and he did Fred Bear and I was like, holy shit, what is this song? And I... I I think he released it as a single, but then it came out on the album in 1995. And then I shoot to 2007, and the, some of the later Ted albums have some really good shit on there. Uh, this one is from the Love Grenade album, the song Geronimo and Me. Really cool shuffle to it kind of feel. Heavy guitar sound for Ted. Great chorus. Uh, some amazing lead playing on there. And the solo in this song absolutely fucking rips. And the band is absolutely just killing it underneath. Just fantastic. And my final song is going to be from the Crave Man album in 2002. I want to wrap up my list with like a totally fucking cranking song. This rocker has like groove all day. Amazing crisp sounding guitars. Just a ripper of a song. 
Ted uh, just absolutely tears it up on there. Um, I've seen this song play live a few times, and it just absolutely fucking kicks ass. Hey, folks, it's Editing Room Dylan. So listening to this part, it seems like my dad forgot to tell you what the song was for his last pick. And he picked Raw Dogs and Warthogs from the Crave album. So that's the name of the song that he picked. He was so excited talking about it, completely forgot to mention the title of the song. So that's the song he picked. Without further ado, let's get back into the episode. There's my 10. Whew! I feel like, I feel like Ted talking, you know what you got to tell me about it, right? When he gets all that fucking stage rap going, I'm like, yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Steven, you got anything on any of them? Uh, I think that uh, a couple of those songs may appear in my list as we go along. Uh, you had some great gems in there. I mean, listen, a lot of people miss the song Little Miss Dangerous, but there's actually a few good tracks on that record. Yep. And uh, I like it. And then also the nice surprise for me was, uh, uh, what is it, If You Can't Lick Them? If You Can't that, Lick Them, that lick record? Em. Skin Tight. Yeah. Yeah, Skin Tight's a, a nice surprise. And there's a couple of other uh, gems on that record as well. All right, cool. Go. What do you got? Yeah, uh, Stormtroopin's a great Ted Nugent song. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of when Derek St. Holmes sings for Ted. So any okay. song that Derek is singing on, I'm going to be a fan of, and this is a classic. Uh, I, I really, uh, Fred Bear, you know, that's also kind of a classic. Um, the music made me do it. That's probably the only listenable track on that album, besides Backstrap Fever. Backstrap Fever. That's just God, <laughs> talk about Ugh. cringeworthy. Yeah, it's that. That's exactly how I would describe that album as cringeworthy. Just bad. Raw Dogs and Warthogs. That was on my list originally. That's a, a it's a grungy song for Ted. Mm-hmm. It's got the, it's got like a, a heaviness that you normally don't get from him. That I think is a really cool. Um, and Geronimo and me, though the lyrics are a little bit cringy as well, the music in it is phenomenal. That's one of the best musical Ted songs. The riffing and the soloing, the backing band, they're all on fire in that song. So just by the by the sheer instruments alone on that song, it is it is one of his best. But uh, yeah, your your list was very, very good. I uh, I listened to some of them today and I was I was nodding my head along. I was jamming along. All right. All right, Stephen, what do you got for us on your list today? I'm up. All right. Well, let me give you a little bit of criteria and a little bit of background with me and the Nuge. Actually, first I meant all, to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, I don't, I don't pay attention to the political thing. I'm I don't either. Anti, I'm as anti-political as they come. So uh, I have your own opinions. Just keep them away from me, basically, <laughs> and that goes for all uh, political opinions. But anyway, uh, so yeah. My history with the Nuge goes pretty far back, but I got to be honest, I've never been like a super fan. I've always liked a lot of his music, and especially early on in the 70s and early 80s, I mean, he was he was rocking back then. And, you know, that was just kind of the dawning of a heavier guitar sound with artists. You know, Van Halen was 78, and Nuge was even uh, before some of that stuff. So uh, I got to start out with a song off the State of Shock album, Paralyzed. I absolutely love the riff in Paralyzed. It's a great tune. Going a little bit deeper off the Free For All album, Street Rats kicks ass, man. That song will rip you a new one. And it's not a very well-known song. It's certainly not one of his big hits. Uh, But Street Rats off the Free For All record. And then uh, I'm going to stick with the Free For All album. And I hate to do this three times, but I got three songs off the uh, the Free For All album. Dog Eat Dog, which I absolutely love, and Free For All. I mean, both those songs to me, and they're back-to-back on the album, To me, that solidifies rock and roll for me. Free for all, I can remember being uh, working for a club band back in the uh, early 80s. They did free for all, and it was so good. Came off so well. Crowd loved that song. Just a fun song, basically. Moving on to the debut Ted Nugent record. You talked about it a little bit, Dylan. Derek St. Holmes, man. What a singer this guy is uh and so just what the doctor ordered is uh always been a favorite of mine and derek just god he's such a great singer 
Wango Tango off the Scream Dream record. Absolutely love it. And then you talked about it a little bit, Steve, but you forgot to you forgot to add the fact that they've changed the title of this over the years a little bit off the Cat Scratch Fever record. Wang Dang Sweet Poony Tang. Not, <laughs> not Poon Tang, Poony Tang. We've renamed that. <laughs> He'll be glad to hear it. Co host. Yeah. In honor of my co host, we've renamed that to uh, Wang Dang Sweet <laughs> Poony Tang. Who doesn't love that riff? Off of uh, off the debut record, another one, Steve, that you picked, Storm Trooping. You've already talked about that. I love that song as well. And then finishing up with a couple of uh, lesser known albums. You know, Ted Nugent, uh, when he was around in the mid '80s, when hair band stuff was was big, he had a couple of records out that I know a lot of the uh, Classic Ted fans, I don't think loved, but to me, it had some great kind of mid eighties rock and roll on it. One was Penetrator and the song Tied Up in Love, which kicks kicks off that uh, record. I think that was uh, Brian Howe singing on that record, if I'm not mistaken. You are not mistaken Uh, at all. No, and he's fantastic, right? He was a fantastic singer. And uh, that song, Tied Up in Love, off Penetrator, that kicks that record off, is a killer song. So I would suggest people that are into, you know, mid-80s hairband rock and roll, go listen to that song. And then um, another one off the Little Miss Dangerous record, the one that kicks that record off, High Heels in Motion. That's another good one. That that and Tied Up in Love are great, like, mid-80s, hair band sounding kind of melodic rock songs uh with uh with really good singing on it and i'm kind of like you uh dylan i think i prefer the uh Derek st holmes and the brian howells to sing ted stuff uh but ted is ted is an amazing guitar player and uh, uh you can't deny that stuff so uh, definitely check that stuff up. It's God, tied up in love, man. I listened to that song today. I ain't going back to it, but yeah, he he rips a guitar solo at the beginning before that song kicks off. That's killer stuff, man. Yeah, it is actually. That song was on my list before I knocked two songs off. That was one because I I remember you mentioned that when we were having our conversation before the uh, when I asked you if you'd come on. So I was kind of hoping that that would have been the one that you picked. What do you think of Stevens' list, but don't. It's good. I have a couple of repeats. I won't go into those so that I can have at least something to talk about with my list. But uh, Paralyzed almost made my list. That's a really great rocker. High Heels in Motion. It's really funny because I I remembered that song from way back, but I never put it in my head that it was a Ted song because it does not sound like a Ted song. It sounds like it could it could have came from like any band from the eighties, but it's 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 a catchy song. It's got a real a real good sing along chorus. Um, I mean. Dog Eat Dog, that's a classic. There, there are certain songs that um, I don't mind Ted singing, and I think that's one of them for me because it's not like a, it's not like Stranglehold where you actually need to sing well for it to, right. to sound good. Because like, but like the songs that Ted adds character to, I don't mind him singing, yeah. and this is one of them for me. But good well, list. Well, you know, and you, you... You know, and you mentioned like High Heels in Motion and Tied Up in Love not necessarily reminding you of a Ted song. And that might be in part because, like I said, it's it's that mid-80s sound yeah. uh, and production. But also, um, it just kind of dawned on me when you were saying that and me listening to these tunes. Really, those two tunes could have been damn Yankee songs in a way. Uh, where you know Ted's playing, but he's not singing. Yeah, and it could have come off on on uh, in that same lane uh, if Jack or or Tommy were uh, singing those songs. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Stephen, coolest, and uh, you you came through. You 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 know you kept your pinch hit streak alive here. <laughs> um, Paralyzed, great song. And actually, I in prep for this, I li- I, I listened to all the albums and. State of Shock, really, that's the one album that, like, Paralyzed was really the only song that I that I really enjoyed off that album. I don't know why it just, like, fell flat for me. Huh. Street Rats, good song from uh, Free For All, real cool. I talked about Dog Eat Dog. 
Free For All, just a fantastic song. Always a cool staple live. Just what the doctor ordered. Absolutely fucking love that song. Another one. Great live. Wango Tango. And there's a song that he didn't play live for a long, long time. And um, and I, it was cool when he brought it back. And, and I always think of my sister when this, because this is her favorite Ted song. And every time I, you know, I'd say, you know, we went to see Ted. Oh, did he play Wango Tango? I'm like, no. She's like, shit. You know, <laughs> she gets mad when he didn't play it. Uh, Wang Dang, Sweet Poonie Tang. Talked about that. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Storm Troopin', fantastic. Tied Up in Love, like I said, I had that song on my list. And um, very cool song that the, the, uh, the solos and the little licks throughout that whole song is just fantastic. Uh, like a more modern, updated type of Ted song. And literally at the end I put, and God damn, that solo, don't miss this one. And High Heels in Motion, great. You, you, like, like Dylan said, you would never think that this is a Ted song, but... You know who sings that, right, Stephen? Uh, who's on that little Miss Dangerous record? Um, I can't remember. Dave Amato. He's the he's the lead guitar player in Ario Speedwagon now. Oh no, not at all. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Because and and he that's who played. He, he was in the band. He played with them live for that tour, and um, he was great. He was fantastic, and he sang all the Derek St. Holmes stuff live on that tour. I didn't see him after that tour for a while, but he was the. He was the second guitar, the rhythm guitar player, and he sang all that Derek St. Holmes stuff and the, the you know, obviously the stuff from that album. So, great, great list and a great pinch hit list. So, I appreciate it, Stephen. Very, very cool list. Okay, so now we'll do our gem song really quick. And I wanted to throw something in there. I know we're talking about Ted, but, and actually Stephen alluded to it the on his last conversation there when he mentioned Damn Yankees. And um, I absolutely am an insane damn yankees fan the first damn yankees album is a desert island album for me there's not even anything close to a fucking skipper on that album and uh, i want to play a song from them my ultimate favorite damn yankees song of all times so we are going to play come again from the damn yankee debut album from 1990 and i gotta tell you we saw night ranger uh, you guys have heard us talk about Night Ranger. They were on the Kiss Cruise, and I saw them play right after the... Actually, the week after the Kiss Cruise got back, a couple days after it got back, and they would start out doing Come Again on acoustic, and they would... Uh, Jack Blades would sing it right up to where it kicks in, and then they would do High Enough. So I want to hear the whole song, so we're going to play it right now.
right, hope you guys enjoyed Come Again from Damn Yankees, 1990, self-titled debut album. Absolutely fucking love that song. I didn't give Steven enough time to do a hidden gem, so Dylan and I are just going to do them real quick here. And uh, what do you got, Dylan? So I recently discovered today, actually, that uh, there's... Well, I didn't discover that the, this, but there's a new Guardians of the Galaxy game that's out. And the thing that I discovered about it is that the company that made it decided to make a fictional band... Uh, that the character of Star Lord got his name from, uh, called and the band's called Star Lord, and they they made a fictional like '80s metal album called Space Rider, and they have ten songs on it. It's basically just like the '80s metal songs that that have that that epic feel to it. The album cover is really cool, and it, it's it's a really good album for just being made just to make a fictional band for a video game. Like they put a lot of effort into it. The guitar works really great. The singing works well for... It almost reminds me of House of Lords a little bit. Just a tiny bit. But I, I really, really enjoy this album for what it is. So, the album Space Rider by the fictional band Star-Lord. Does it say who plays on it? Uh, yeah, so the... Anybody we would know? No, it's um, it's all, like, in-house people. So, it was, like... like studio musicians, or...? Yeah, it, well, it was the uh, audio director of the game that kind of created the the songs and stuff. Uh, Steve Sozipow... Pukowski, it's his last name is S Z C Z E P K O W S K I. Okay. And then Johan Bodrald. Okay. So great names that I can't yeah. pronounce, and I apologize for butchering them. But I did, I did listen to probably about three quarters of that album today, and the guy singing sounds like the dude from the fucking movie. Yeah. It's like it sounds like it's he good. would sound singing the what's his name? Uh, Star Lord. Yeah. What Chris what, Pratt? Chris Pratt. I because yeah. I'm like that could be him singing that. And it, it was pretty cool, so absolutely check that out. And for me, my hidden gem is going to be a actually it's going to be a book this week. Uh, just it just came out. It's called Building an Empire: The Story of Queen's Reich. It's written by James R. Beach with Brian L. Naren and Brian J. Heaton. Um, goes and and the thing I like about it, I'm only actually getting to where they're getting the whole band together because it goes in the guy's background for the whole band. But you don't have the excruciating detail of you know, the first note that Jeff Tate heard or the second note that he ever sang and the, the first time Michael Wilton ever seen a guitar. You get, like, just a quick cliff note version of their, their childhood, maybe a couple paragraphs, and you're done. Then you're right into when they're starting bands and stuff like that. Because the... Some, some, I'm sure, Stephen, you read a bunch of uh, rock biographies and you too, Dylan, that, like, they just get into nauseating detail of these people's childhoods. Like, I don't care about that. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I like to hear a quick... Here's, you know, this was an influence, this was an influence, boom, okay, you're in a band now. Um, but this is a, a very wow. well concise version of that. And um, I just looked, there's a ton of pictures in this book. It's uh, it's very well put together. And so check it out. You can, I know it's on Amazon. I got it directly from the, from the author. But uh, it's a really good book, though. And so check it out. It's called Building an Empire, the Story of Queensryche by James R. Beach with Brian Naren and Brian J. Heaton. So check that out. So there's our gems this week. Dylan has the star uh, band Star-Lord, and the album is called Space Rider. It's the track, is it the sound the soundtrack for the game for the Galaxy Gardens, the Guardians of so, the Galaxy. Yeah, so it's like, it's basically, there. it's just like, because there is an actual soundtrack that has like um, Iron Maiden on it and like a bunch of different 80s bands and stuff, but this, is, this was kind of made for the... Uh, main character in the game to be a fan of. So they just kind of made it on a whim okay. to also put it in there. So it is kind of a soundtrack for the game. Okay. It is cool, though. It is cool. All right. So uh, there's mine and Dylan's gems, and we'll get into the list. And speaking of Dylan, Dylan, what's your list? What do you got? For yeah. Ten? So I just want to lead off by saying that I really <sighs> don't like Ted Nugent as a person, but I do like his music. I think he he's a really great guitar player. He's a good singer again when it comes to the the charactery songs that that kind of have that that weirdness to them. But I, I think he's I think he has a really great uh, you know uh, shredder and he he does deserve some accolades in terms of his guitar playing for sure. Uh, so uh, in that vein, I picked ten songs that I thought were were kind of really good indicators of how uh, what I like about Ted Nugent. So the first song that I picked uh, this is. From the Love Grenade album, which was the first album that I consciously remember hearing from Ted, because I don't know, it was it was around that time that you were playing that album quite a bit, uh, and I picked Still Raising Hell because that's such a 
a good biting song. Should have been the lead off on the album instead of Love Grenade. But you know, it's it's a very good statement song that uh, that kicks ass. It's got that that edge to it that I really like. It, it shows like a, a cool later era Ted that that I think is is not bad. Uh, and it's, it's just a really good shredding song. The next song, I had to give this one up for my Aunt Lynn, Wango Tango. This is the character Ted song that I like because he's got that middle spoken word section with that Maserati. Ooh, ooh. I love the background mm-hmm. vocals in that, that song. It's And the, the ending is just amazing. With I need the, some motivation to avoid the nauseous yeah. frustration when I need some lubrication. It's like, look at, looking for a garage. It's, <laughs> hey, that one's open. You know, it's, it's like, like what? Like why are you thinking about garages being open? At, it's... You know, it's just wild, but I love the I love the ending with the wango 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 tango 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 yeah 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 yeah. yeah. It's just it's like such a cool ending, and uh, it was used really well in the second season of Stranger Things. So that uh, it kind of reminded me how much I like that song, and that one goes out to my aunt Lynn, who that's that's her favorite song. Uh, number three, this is one that that Stephen had mentioned from the original Ted Nugent album, just what the doctor ordered. You got to give it up for Derek St. Holmes' vocals on this, and it's got that classic bluesy feel to it that. That Ted takes a lot of influence from, and it's got that rock and roll feel that's really great. I love the I love how Derek sings in this song. It's just it's just amazing, and Ted cannot sing it, <laughs> but it, this is one that you have to do with Derek Tate Holmes because it's just it's got that awesome awesome vocal to it. Uh, number four from the Weekend Warriors album. I love the the intro of this one. Need you bad the. And I love the call and response guitar. Like with the, cause I need you. You know, it's just a really fun. I I love the call and response of the guitar on that. It's just it's really fantastic. Another kind of callback to twelve bar blues type of song, where where Ted gets his his influence from. Uh, the next song, uh, this one's from the Little Miss Dangerous album, Painkiller, but it is not a cover of the Judas Priest song. This one uh, has a, a, a bit of a, a bite to it. It's a little longer. I love the solo in this one. Really great solo. That's probably the reason why I picked this song is is that solo, which just kind of kicks ass. And I, I never really checked out Ted's other albums. Like I like I listened to the first Ted Nugent album like religiously, and you know I would listen to Love Grenade. But a lot of the other albums I kind of would be pits and pieces from. I I know more of the popular songs, so I was kind of skipping around and. I discovered this song and I really, really enjoyed it, so I had to put it on the list. And then number six, uh, this is one that everybody's mentioned so far, I believe. Free for all from the Free for All album. You know, you, the stakes are high and so am I. It's just a really great line, and this is one that that has Ted's character in it. And the the guitar riff is so simple, but and then the kind of maracas in the background there are really fun. But the I love the the one guitar part of the just some really, really fun playing. Uh, number seven, uh, also from the Free For All album, and this is one that Steven had picked, Street Rats. What Steven didn't mention, though, is that Meatloaf does the lead vocals on this one. And this was right before Bad Out of Hell. I was really surprised to see Meatloaf credited. I was like, what the hell is Meatloaf doing on a Ted Nugent album? And then they said it was before he released Bad Out of Hell. I'm like, oh, okay, he wasn't famous yet. That makes sense. But uh, <laughs> He sings about four songs on he that sings, album. He sings quite a few of them, and he sings them well. Like, Street Rats is a great song. And... It doesn't have like the the meatloaf tremolo like to his voice that you would like know from meatloaf later on like from two out of three ain't bad uh, that that kind of annoys me it's 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 a little more of a straightforward meatloaf vocal that I think really works for the song and again the guitar work on it is really great the my number eight song uh, from the self titled debut album hey baby another great Derek St Holmes vocal performance and it's another bluesy bump. But it's got a nice groove to it. You're kind of bouncing along and hey baby. It's just a, a really fantastic Ted song. Number nine, I picked one from the State of Shock album. I picked Snake Charmer. Uh, this one again, it, it, I don't know if I like the whole song of it. It's kind of a little bit of a, a mid-tempo song, but then the guitar solo in it I think is really great. And that's what kind of brings me back to it. And then the last song I picked from track 10, I had to put on another Derek St. Holmes track from Cat Scratch Fever, Death by Misadventure. This is a, a one that I was not expecting to like as much as I did. It is a, a really good, fun song that has a great a great uh, feel to it. And it's just a, a fun title, Death by Misadventure. Like, ooh, what's what's going to happen in that song? But, uh, yeah, that's my list, uh, the, all the ten songs. So what do, you, what do you think, Steven? Dude, Death by Misadventure, I completely missed that off my list, and it was on my list. I don't know what happened to it. I think <laughs> when I was making my list... 
I kind of set it aside and forgot to add it back in or something, but I love that tune. That tune's awesome. That's a great pick. And uh, Painkiller, Little Miss Dangerous, another good one. Still Raising Hell from Love Grenade, Grenade, also great. Street Rats, so you talked about Meatloaf. First of all, I can't believe that we both had Street Rats on yeah. the list. <laughs> what, what the hell are the odds of that? I was like, nobody's ever going to pick this tune, Street Rats from Free For All. And you knew the whole time that it was on your list, which makes me laugh. Yeah. But uh, I, to be honest, I don't know that I knew Meatloaf sang that song uh that's why i probably never mentioned it i just i i was drawn into the riff of it yeah yeah it's a great list man that's a good good solid list man thank you i gotta tell you steven don't let your meatloaf <laughs> i like mine with gravy and mashed potatoes i don't know about you buddy all right yeah dylan cool list um like i said a couple couple repeats is great still raising hell fucking fantastic song wango tango talked about that um painkiller I love the beginning. Bang, yeah. bang. The bass is like, holy yeah, fuck, it's right in your cool. face on that one. And he did that one live on oh, that tour. Cool. Totally ripped it up. Fantastic. Um, Snake Charmer, that's that's a deep track. That's one I was, that was kind of a little surprise for me, uh, for you. And um, Death by Misadventure. That was a, that was one, too. I'm like, fuck. Like, that one just missed my list, too. So, very cool list. Uh, ab- absolutely enjoyable. Good Good, good picks, Dylan. I was trying to go off the beaten path because I know... Yeah, and I know, I know you're not that familiar yeah, with I know, a lot of I know stuff. Ted, like, mostly for his hits. I've seen them live, so I know those songs. But, like, I didn't... I was, like, trying to be like, oh, that, that track sounds cool. I'll I'll check that out and then kind of yeah. bounce around. That's kind of how I landed on those those tracks. Okay, cool. And let me give you guys BC's list. I have 12 from him, so I don't know which ones he would have wanted to boot out. So <laughs> I'll just give them, give them all to you. He has Need You Bad. Dog Eat Dog, Stranglehold. We haven't talked about Stranglehold. Yeah. Um, Stormtroopin', Snakeskin Cowboys, Skin Tight, Fred Bear. Um, there's one called Cluster Fucky, Cluster Fuck Me, I think it's called the beginning. It's on the beginning of Crave Man and uh, Crave, so that's kind of a double one he's got there. Yank Me, Crank Me, Still Raising Hell, Crazy Ladies from Little Miss Dangerous, and Out of Control. And I think Out of Control is from Cat Scratch Fever, maybe? Coolest from BC. Uh, I love the... The, the guitar sound on the, the Crave Man album, that is really cool. Yank Me, Crank Me, uh, great song. You know, we've heard that one on Double Live Gonzo. Real short song, but very cool. And um, I love the, and Steve, we'll talk about this real quick here. Stranglehold, the very first song on the very first Ted Nugent album. What a way to start and say, this is what you're going to get right here from me. Um, just a fantastic song. I, I that is a riff that is just fucking so recognizable, so amazing. I they it was put in the movie Rockstar, absolutely fucking edited perfect in that movie when they're in the the club and mm-hmm. everyone's hooking up with everybody and you know all that shit. I mean, I that and I think of that when I when I hear that song, just how good that is edited into that movie. And um, you know some of the other ones, Snakeskin Cowboys. Um, that's one that. He hadn't played a long time, but then when, when Derek St. Holmes came back to the band, they busted that one back out. Another great song. So uh, uh, BC's got some some good stuff on there. A couple, you know, couple couple overlaps on these ones, but I'm glad, you know, and and we could talk, you know, ad nauseum about, you know, Cat Scratch Fever and uh, Great White Buffalo, you know, all the stuff that you, you hear, like like Double F Gonzo and the stuff that you hear that are staples of the set. Yeah. But Motor I wanted City to just kind of, huh? Motor City Motor Madhouse. City Madhouse. Um, just a fantastic Stephen, once again, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go around the table, plug your podcast, and uh, wrap up, and, and we'll, uh, we'll let you get out of here, my friend, because I have a feeling I'm going to be talking to you again this evening at some point. <laughs> yeah, and remind me before we sign off, i got to tell you guys uh, uh, my Derek St. Holmes story. Okay. <laughs> not, not, yeah, so not for viewers the Grown Up Rock podcast, uh, we release every Sunday. If you're listening to this podcast, you can get the Grown Up Rock podcast anywhere that you get this one. It is hard rock and heavy metal themed episodes. So occasionally we'll do an interview with somebody. So it's either music you grew up with in the 80s or music that is from today that sounds like that music that you grew up from in the 80s. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, no G at the end. So it's G-R-O-W-I-N-U-P-R-O-C-K, Grown Up Rock with myself and my co-host, Sonny Hollywood. 
Pune. Then, well, thanks for coming, like pinch hitting on such short notice, Stephen. It's always great having you on. And uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, like if anybody was gonna pinch hit for the Ted Nugent, it, it, it had to be you because you know I, I always associate Wang Dang Sweet Pun Tang with, with hearing you say it with your with your southern drawl. That's how I always, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I always hear it in my head anymore. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think Ted is a really good musician. Um, his earlier catalog is is fantastic. Uh, his work with Derek St. Holmes is my favorite. I love I love how Derek sings, and it really adds it elevates Ted. I think quite a bit. But uh, I, I I think he does have some good songs where he sings as well. I just prefer you know the other singers because Ted's not the the most melodic singer. Uh, he's like he's like David Lee Roth live. You know he he has character. He has the personality, but he doesn't have. Well, he sings better than Dave. Yeah, sometimes. But uh, yeah, I I, uh, I I like Ted's music. I'll say that for sure. Uh, his guitar playing is great. Uh, he is a fantastic guitarist. You can't take that away from him. And you can listen to a lot of his guitar playing skills on our Spotify playlist of the week, where we'll have all the songs that we talked about uh, on that playlist, and you'll be able to listen to them and take a take a check check it out for yourself because. Um, if you have to say anything about him positive, it's that he's a great guitarist, for sure. All right. Yeah, once again, Stephen, thank you for, for pitching in tonight. I really appreciate it. And you guys out there, check out Grown Up Rock Podcast with Stephen and Sonny. That's my every Sunday morning. That's my listen, unless I have to text Stephen to remind him that it's not uploaded yet. <laughs> um, but I was That was only once. I know. <laughs> and I'm never going to let you forget it either. <laughs> but uh, and I got to tell you guys out there, uh, Stephen did an interview with Zach Wild a couple a couple weeks ago. I think it was out. And Stephen, I got to tell you, it was an absolutely fantastic interview with Zach. Probably the best one I've heard. And uh, you know how much I hate to give you praise, <laughs> but um, it, it was absolute absolute killer interview. You you covered all the the spots with him, talking about the new album and everything. And um, I just want to tell you, you hit, you hit a home run with that one, absolutely, and um, it was fantastic. Ted Nugent, amazing guitar player, absolutely amazing guitar player. Uh, like I said before, I wish he'd just keep his mouth shut, but I just in, I just enjoy the hell out of his music. I've been a, 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 fan, a fan of his music since the '70s, and uh, you know, like I said, in the in the '80s, there he kind of kind of waned a little bit, but there are some some good gems on those '80s albums. And, you know, and, and, and actually, like Dylan said, like, you wouldn't know some of the songs from, like, Little Miss Dangerous that, that it's even a Ted Nugent song because of yeah. the, the vocals. And then um, uh, if you can't lick them, lick them, I think, or either that or Penetrator, what he did with Brian Howe, you can't even tell that it's a Ted Nugent song. But but it, there's still, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, you know, there's no, I don't think maybe any of those albums would be close to being a Desert Island album for me or maybe even anyone but there are some good songs in there, and you can't go wrong with the classic Ted. And even the newer albums, there, there's there are some cringeworthy stuff on there, but there's some really ripping guitar playing on that one. And uh, and actually, he does a, a duet uh, with Sammy Hagar on his last album. That is actually I listened to it yesterday; it was pretty cool. So, thanks for tuning in, you guys. Appreciate it once again. Thanks to Stephen Michael from the Grown Up Rock Podcast, and check those guys out every Sunday morning. And wherever you can get your podcast, if you listen to us, you can listen to them in the same spot. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Crank some Ted. Dylan will have the Spotify playlist in the show notes. And uh, I may go listen to some Ted when we're done here. So uh, thanks again, you guys. Love you guys. Keep sharing. Keep interacting with us. Uh, we will see you next time. And there definitely will be a next time. Next time.